Hello everyone, welcome back to Backbone Exotics. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I set up this guy's enclosure. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be needing is a tub, of course. And this is only 18 quarts because this snake is only about 100 grams. It's a, a hatchling. However, check the description if you want to know what size is perfect for your snake. Okay, to prepare your enclosure, make sure you have a lot of ventilation both on the side and on top of your lid. You also want to make sure your lid is, I mean, your enclosure is sterile. So for that, we recommend you using Wipeout or anything, you know, that, that could replace this. It could be like alcohol or whatever. And all you really want to do is just sterilize your enclosure and spray it. You want to let that rest for about a minute to let it do its job and start killing all those bacteria. And after, we're just going to wipe it down and spray water to take off the, the remaining uh, solution. Okay, so the reason why you want to... Uh, use water even after you wipe down all the solution is because sometimes some can be left over like some residue even if you wipe it as best as you can and whenever you go to mist down your enclosure or if your snake or whichever animal you're using this for gets into its water dish and then starts rubbing up against the sides some of that leftover residue can get on your animal on your snake and start burning it so it's very important please make sure that you don't skip this step You see, even after I thought I did a really, really good job on cleaning this with the solution and some paper towels, you can see that's still really, really dirty. The water even has like a yellowish color to it. So you see, that's what I'm saying. It's really important to water it. Use water after you use your solution. Okay, so now this is where uh, the quality of your tub that you bought comes in place. And it's because of the heat. If this is really cheap plastic and it's really, really thin, it doesn't matter what you try to do. All the heat pad's gonna do is melt through the plastic and end up burning your animal. So please choose a sturdy and reputable um, brand for your tubs. And all we're really gonna do is try to see where we're gonna do our hot side, you know, either this side or that side. And I think I'm going for more of this side. So all I'm really gonna do is just stick it, stick it at the bottom. Get it as stuck as possible and to make sure it sticks well we're going to be using uh some heat tape this tape goes really really well that it, it, it like it's adhesiveness or it's stickiness really sticks on no matter how hot this gets i think the max temperature that this can like uh stick on is over a thousand degrees fahrenheit so you know that's never going to happen with the heat pad but you know, it's better to be safe and use something that can hold that much heat. Okay, so now you just wanna put it where you're gonna leave your heat mat and put that tape good on there. Now you're just gonna wanna repeat the process. I might even add another layer right here to really, really ensure that this doesn't come off. And I'm going to do it along the sides, you know, keep it away from the cord. You know, you don't want, I don't want this to, you know, accidentally cause a fire or something. So I'm only going to add like a little bit right here, you know. And then you also want to allow your, your heat mat to breathe, if that makes sense. You want some heat to escape. You don't want like an oven in here that just stays consistently hot all the time. So without further ado, we're just going to finish this up off camera and get back to you when it's finished. Okay, so it should look something like this when you're finished. You see, it's very flat on there. The tape is not going to come off. It's going to be. It's going to take a lot for this tape to come off. And please don't use any duct tape because that's just going to melt away. And you're just going to be left with a big sticky mess underneath. So now that that's done, you're not going to plug this into the wall. That's the first thing you're not going to do. The first thing you're going to do is go get a thermostat. 
I, I really recommend the jumpstart ones, but so I started experimenting with something new and this one's called BN Link. And this is the first time I'm using it, so I'm not really sure what's how it's gonna work out. But you know, I'm never gonna learn about it if I never try it out. This is also way cheaper. This is only, I think it was $18.99 without taxes or shipping. While the jumpstart was a little bit more expensive, it was around $54.60, I think last time I remember. So now we're just gonna have to plug this into here and plug this into your wall and set your thermostat. I recommend using it, putting it around at 90 degrees. That way it has a one degree uh, fluctuation. So that means it could drop to 89 degrees. It could be right on at 90 degrees or it even can jump up a little a degree to 91 degrees. That's the perfect temperature that I found it at. It's warm enough as a hot spot for it and it won't melt through the plastic. Okay, so now that you've got your heating all set up, you want to start adding the stuff into the enclosure, you know. So we're going to start off with our substrate, water dishes, and hide. Those are the three main things you need inside of, inside of an enclosure. And you could use, as substrate, you could use anything like newspaper, paper towels, or cocoa fiber. But I personally love every having everything in my, uh, in my care as bioactive. So I'm going to be using the bioactive, so I'm going to load this up with springtails and isopods. So... I'll show you guys that. Okay, so to start off, I like putting my uh, water dishes in first. And you don't want this directly on top of your heat pad. So, you know, it's important to do this first so you don't forget on what side your heat mat is. And I'm going to get it all the way to this corner. For a water dish, you don't want anything too big. But you also want to give him something plenty big enough for him to be, him or her, you know, your snake, to be able to submerge its body, its entire body in here without, you know, drowning itself. So that's the first step. So this is my bioactive soil. If you want to see how to make it, there's a link in my description. Or you can subscribe and check it out in my channel. It should be titled, uh, How to Make Perfect Bioactive Soil. We just want to spread this around evenly. Got to distribute it more over here. And this substrate is really, really fluffy, as you can tell. But you could also press really hard on it and it could compact. This is also perfect substrate for a hatchling because it, it retains its humidity really, really well, which is exactly what you need, especially for a hatchling because they're so sensitive, so small right now. Okay, so finally, you're going to need a hide. Unfortunately, this is the only like well-sized hide that I have left, so it's just going to have to make do. I'm just going to put it right on top of its, its heat spot, and because you usually want to go for a darker hide because it, it makes them feel more secure, especially because this tub is extremely see-through. All I'm going to be doing is putting some more substrate on top of it to allow it to get darker in there. Okay, so now that we're all finished, this is literally all they need for now. Remember, this is only a temporary enclosure. This is not for a lifetime. This is not what it's going to be raised in. This is just for right now and it works. And we just need to fill this up with uh, safe water. We like to treat our water with RepTi-Safe because it removes all the bad stuff inside your water, such as lead and chlorine. And it also adds electrolytes for your snake to drink. So that's all you're gonna need for now. But like I said, I like having my enclosures all bioactive set up. So the next step for me is to add some springtails. I need plenty of springtails to prevent this enclosure to begin molding. And I'll add the isopods later on in the future once I start noticing the, the snake actually going to the bathroom and there being enough food for the isopods. So all I need to do is just get a couple of charcoal pieces that are full of ice of spring toast, I'm sorry. As you can see there's one right there. And 
And just like that, it's that easy. Okay, and never forget to set up your probe. This is really easy. All you really want to do is put a suction cup right next to it. Give yourself some slack on the probe. And remember that part that I told you guys not to tape up? You just want to stick your probe under there. Just like so. And there you're done. Okay guys, so now we've waited for our enclosure to properly heat up. And we're just going to go ahead and put this little guy in. And I think he's going to go in his little hide. Because it's nice and warm in there. And it's very dark. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching our video. If you guys liked our enclosure and this idea for a temporary enclosure, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you want to check up on the on this little guy and see how he's doing always check us out on instagram at backbone exotics and yeah so i'll see you guys next time